Hi, and thank you for joining me. If you are uh, starting a pet photography business, then you definitely want to tune into this. Who am I anyway to be talking about this? My name is Kirsty McConnell. I am one half of the Pet Photographers Club. The other half is Caitlin McColl. I began my pet photography business oof, 2012 in a small country town in Australia. I uh, very shortly after moved uh, to a new state and I was just 21 years old uh, to start my business in Adelaide. So there's about all there was then, uh, just over a million people in Adelaide then. Anyway, um, I managed to turn that into a six-figure business. And so now I'm here today to give you a few pointers as to how you can do the same in a much shorter period of time, hopefully, because uh, here's a bit of a shortcut for you. So I remember thinking that I wanted just like a checklist, somebody to just give me a few steps of like what I had to do next because I was 21 years old. And even if I wasn't, I mean, when you switch careers or when you start out as a pet photographer or a photographer, normally we don't actually decide like I want to be in business. It's I want to be a photographer. Oh, that means I have to be in business. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, I remember that I really wanted just a checklist so I could just go, okay, what do I do next? Because it was super overwhelming. And back then there were not really that many resources. I'd been to photo college and still I had no idea because we study photography, but nothing about business. <laughs> so here are my tips. Number one, know your numbers because even if you just look at the photographer down the road and copy their price list, that doesn't mean that it's going to actually be the right price list for you. You need to know your numbers. You need to take into account your uh, cost of goods, the amount of time that you're spending, your cost of doing business. Like maybe you've got huge overheads or like insurance or travel because you have to travel two hours to your shoots. Um, there's so many things to take into consideration. So number one, before you do anything else, know your numbers. We have a free uh, cheat sheet to find out your required average sale on the club website. There is a link in this post. Check that out. It's free. It's super easy to follow. It's just fill in the gaps. Um, and then that will give you a really good idea for kind of at least what you need to be earning per shoot based on that. Um, so that's tip number one, know your numbers. And tip number two, Know your ideal client, the experience that they want, where they hang out and, uh, and, and be there, basically. So the only way that you're going to ever attract this kind of client that you want to work with is for them to know that you exist. But if you're hanging out on Instagram, for example, and that's where all your friends are and that's where you are, but your friends are never going to spend the money that you need them to with you then, and your ideal client is not on Instagram, they're on LinkedIn or they're on Pinterest or they're not even online, they go to events, then you need to find that information out and be in those spots too, okay? This is um, quite a, a sort of in-depth activity that needs to be done, uh, creating an avatar. So that's like a picturing a fictional character and then you base all of your decisions in your business around what this character would want. It is an activity that we do as part of the Business Foundations Challenge. So if you are looking for a little bit of help in your business um, and you don't want to make all the mistakes yourself, you just want a bit of a shortcut or as many mistakes, um, that's a really, really great place to start. I conduct that. The next one does start next week. Um, so I would love to have you in that uh, challenge. It goes for 12 weeks. And anyway, we do do... Um, yeah, this, uh, this activity of creating your client avatar. The next thing that I highly recommend you do is that you adjust or create, if you don't have one yet, your website to one that actually converts. So this is step number three, website. So what most people do is they look around at what other people do on their website and they either just copy and paste and make a couple of changes. So it's not plagiarism, plagiarism. Or they have a glorified portfolio, which is fine. I mean, I started there too. We all probably did that when we first started. So basically you have beautiful photos, you put them on a website. 
full stop. Maybe there's a contact form. But your website is more powerful than that. Than that. If you're Once you do manage to leave people there, you want it to be able to answer their objections, okay? So really consider like um, the wording and the terminology that you're using on your website, the flow that you take them through. So are you giving them the right information at the right time? When they first landed on your site, are they actually ready to book and pay now? And the first thing you have is book and pay now. I mean, if they're not ready for that yet because they only just discovered pet photography was even a thing, then maybe you're asking for money a bit too soon. So in that case, you need to throw in some client testimonials first, start building some trust, um, talk about the experience. I mean, these clients or audience might not understand what's about to happen. They might think, you know, oh, pet photography, great, a dog in a studio and you're a lifestyle outdoor photographer. I mean, you have to give an indication of what they can expect. So definitely really go over your website and think about how you can help to lead this audience through the process so that they're ready um, to contact you rather than just asking them to contact you from the beginning. And then you can look at things like uh, having wall mock-ups if you're planning to sell products, uh, using the right language that actually like really speaks to that ideal client that we spoke about. So, you know, that's things like if they refer to their dog as their baby, then you want to be using terminology on your web your website that says, um, you know, photographs of you and your baby or your fur baby, because uh, that's really going to attract the right client for you if that's who you want. And it will repel um, clients who don't think like that. And that's okay. We can't be scared of that. Now, it's really hard for me to give you this information in like just five quick steps. This is a lot um, of things to learn and implement, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of an idea now so that you can start thinking about things that you need to work on. Um, but again, uh, this is all stuff we go through in the challenge. So if you're looking for a bit more help or I'm completely overwhelming you, feel free to reach out to me and ask about the challenge. Uh, tip number four, drive traffic to your website with a social media account that's more than pretty photos. So this is quite on a similar page as your website where you don't just want to be putting up like another pretty photo, another pretty photo. Instead, you want to be using this platform to educate your client. Now, first things first, you want to be on the right platform, as I mentioned earlier. So if your typical uh, client or the one that you want in is maybe a 24-year-old girl who rides her horse on any spare moment she has in life, maybe Instagram is the right place for you to be growing your audience. But if your client is a 65-year-old 65 65-year-old 65 grandma who lives in another state or another area from all the rest of her family, but she has this... Uh, you know, eight-year-old uh, Cocker Spaniel that she's obsessed with, well, she's not going to be on Instagram most likely. So find out where she hangs out. More likely it's going to be like going to the groomer and this kind of thing. Um, but she might be online too. Maybe she looks up recipes on Pinterest, for example. So then you want to grow your Pinterest. Wherever it is that you decide that you want to put your energy or that works to attract the right client, I want you to really think about how you're using that platform to put your message across. So no more like, oh, well, you can also include like a couple, you know, one, two, three photos a week that's just, here's another pretty dog at a pretty location. Like that's okay too, every now and again. But in between those posts, I want you to be really thinking about what you're posting and what you're communicating. So are you helping the client? Are you entertaining them? I mean, what are you doing to keep them coming back to your platform and to then eventually build trust and a connection and a relationship so that they're ready to book with you when they do want to have their photo shoot? So I want you to really consider that um, uh, with your social media accounts. And tip number five, once you've done all those other things, this one you cannot miss. It is marketing. You need a 12-month, ideally, marketing plan, both online and offline. So not just growing that social media account and fixing your website, but making friends with local uh, partner businesses or finding out what events are happening near you, or doing, uh, I don't know, putting like displays in a vet clinic, something like that. So these are all things you can be doing um, to help build the awareness of your brand, 
and then put in some active campaigns. So I'm talking about doing like giveaways and specials, um, limited edition sessions. So saying like today only or, or in two weeks only, we're doing this special type of photo shoot, take it now or miss out, this kind of thing. Um, so you get all these ideas down, make a list of all the things that you want to do and then divide them up across a year. So it's not like a right now today, I'm feeling excited about my business and boom, I've just put like 10 campaigns out in a row that are all competing with each other. And at the end of the day, it's all like sell, sell, sell. Okay. So you want to be dividing them throughout the year so that you know that you're going to have work all year round. Okay. My next tip when it comes to marketing, just a little extra one for you here um, that I want you to always remember if when you're busy, you forego your marketing plan, you miss something, then your business is always going to have peaks and troughs, okay? You're always going to have like big income month, low income month, big income month, low income month. So what I want you to do instead is to try really hard to maintain like that uh, marketing plan, implementing it all the time, no matter how busy you might be in that particular month, so that the next month you can also be busy. So you've got to stick at it. And the best way you can do that is by having this calendar in place and implemented. First place to start with it is your Hallmark holidays because you can't move them. So, you know, what are you going to do for Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Easter? All of these type of events, school holidays, if you want, you can't move those. So put those in there first with what you're going to do for each of those and then work around it. Where are the gaps in the 12 months and what can you fill them with? That's my biggest plan. Now, I've mentioned the Business Foundations Challenge a couple of times because if you're starting a business, that's where you need to begin. Unless you're listening to me now and going, I can handle that all on my own. In that case, go for it. Otherwise, um, I'm just mentioning it again because we actually spent three full lessons on marketing in that challenge. So you definitely, you know, this is not something that you can just like do in 20 minutes and boom, it's done for the rest of your career. Um, you do need to sit down and, uh, and really put the time into it. And it's even easier, obviously, if you have somebody that's helping you with that. So if I can help you with anything, whether you're going to join the challenge or not, please feel free to shoot me an email. I can be contacted pretty easily. Kirsty is with an IE at uh, thepetphotographersclub.com. I would love to hear from you and hear how you're going. I'm also usually the one that is replying to Instagram messages for the club. So you're welcome to shoot through a message there as well. Um, I hope that that was super helpful for you guys. I have like written all, all of this down basically or a version of this in this blog post as well. So have a read through there if I was rambling a little bit too fast for you. But otherwise, yell out with your questions. Thanks for joining me and I hope you found this super helpful.